everybody, it's Kathy Champion and we're back in my craft room here at Random Acts of Crafting. If you remember the last time that we met uh, with this particular cookbook, we had done our um, waterfall for our pies on, uh, under our dessert section, which is going to be this section right here. The last three pages are dedicated to our desserts. And these three pages right here are going to be dedicated to our sides. And these are going to be our main dishes or entrees. So um, I, had, I had some people to say that they did not see, and I don't know what happened. I must have done it off camera, but they did not see me do the waterfall. And I did do two. I did the one here. Uh, with the pies and I did the one here that I titled cookies and uh, I used uh, the, these particular recipe cards I stamped because I was having trouble with my computer and I couldn't get my printer to work but since then my computer is now working again thanks to concierge service at Costco so shout out to them for good customer service um, what I want to do in today's video is I want to revisit what I did in building up my page. Now, this is going to be the beginning of my sides right here. So this is the front page. So all I did was on this on this plain piece of uh, wagon colored, which is like a sort of an orangey red. Um, all I did was I took a strip of this paper that we used for the I think the back cover right there. I took a strip of it and glued it down the middle. I cut out one of the cutouts which was said recipe notes and I took a little sticker that looks like a quilt and I just stuck it right there. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to put sides on here so that people will know this is the beginning of our sides. Now I'm using my printer to my advantage so I went to my printer and I put sides and I'm going to cut this out with a die cut. So. Okay, I'm back, and see that did work much better once I cut that piece of paper down. So we got this die cut uh, cut out, and there we go. And I do want to ink this with some uh, vintage photo. So let me pull out my little tool, and we might have enough on here without having to grab the ink. Let's try it and see. Oh yeah, I think we got it. Because I don't want a whole lot, I just want enough to define that. A little bit. So a lot of times you've already got enough of ink on your little um, dabber tool or whatever you want to call this ink blending tool. So that looks really good. That's exactly what I wanted. And now what I want to do is just kind of glue this down and I think I'm going to do it kind of at an angle like that. And I'm just going to glue this flat down because like I said over and over um, I don't want I really don't want to have um, too much dimension inside the recipe book because um, a recipe book is going to get a lot of wear and tear. We know this. So I'm just going to glue that down right there. I know some of you said you wanted to see my process of decorating. So this is, this is one of them. So now I'm going to flip this page and up underneath this page right here, we are going to go ahead and put down our first um, or one of our waterfalls. Not our first one, but the one that I'm going to show you how to do today. And I want to let you know that I used my printer to my advantage. Like I said, I printed this off on the printer. And I printed off uh, recipe cards as well. So um, let me put my little die back on the magnetic sheet that it goes on. I'll just lay those down. Um, what I did, and I'm going to show you how I printed these out. This is the recipe card. I got these off of Pinterest and I actually arranged them onto a uh, Word doc and I actually saved this like as a picture and then I brought it, I drug it in and sized it like I wanted. I sized the first one and then I copied and pasted them here and turned them so that they would print in the orientation that I wanted. And I went ahead for the sake of time and I printed out several of these and I went ahead and cut them and I scored them at the top just like that. Now I do need to go back and crease them because I did not do that. Um, 
you also, if you want to make a larger page, you can size these recipe cards up and make them bigger. So like if you wanted to do one of these uh, as a focal point on one of your pages, like say for example uh, here, you could very easily score this and put this here and maybe even do a couple on a page like this because you could score here, fold that under, and then make that um, an accent page there. So just showing you the different options if you print your recipe cards off, uh, if you get, and these were on Pinterest like I said, and I'll see if I can link that page in um, the description below this video. So if you want to go and grab these cards you can do that. They, if you just look up um, printable recipe cards you will find and you might even want to put free behind that because some of them they will charge you for but most of them are a free printable file so uh, of course you do have to have a printer and you have to have ink in your printer in order to get these to uh, print like this but it's such an easy way to have um, a different style of recipe card because sometimes we don't want the same uh, card all the way through our book so if we don't this is a very easy way to show a little bit of your personality have some different cards in your book or you can just keep it very uniform and use the same card throughout it's totally up to you because remember what we always say your craft room, your rules, and this is your recipe book, so make it yours however you want to. But I love a little bit of a hodgepodge. I like the, um, the eclectic look of doing different things on different pages. So, but you do you, and you make it yours, so there's no harm in that. So I'm getting my recipe cards. I did, like I said, I did take them to my... Um, um, scoreboard and I scored them ahead of time so uh, this will this just made it, the process a little easier everybody knows how to score so if you've been doing paper crafting at all you know how to cut and score so I didn't think I needed to show y'all all of that but I do want to go back and show you how to do this waterfall so we're going to work on this page right here and I'm going to pull this over so we can get to it. I'm going to lay my cards right here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to this bottom page right there. Just like that. And I'm going to bring this even to the bottom of my page because that's where I want this to live. I'm going to get my, my art glitter glue. I'm not going to do anything fancy here. On this part that I folded back, I am going to put my glue and I am just working from the bottom to the top and this is how you do a waterfall and this is the this is the way I have found to do the most successful waterfall is just to start at the bottom and then you have this guideline for every page going up so the next one is going to live butted right against that one just like that so we are going to go ahead and put the next one down Again, like I said, just using that, um, that as a guide. And all we're going to do now is we're going to butt this one right up to this, the, one, the previous one that you put down. Moving it and making sure it's even because you want them to be as even as you can possibly get them. This is what will keep your waterfall looking beautiful. And we are just going to continue to build that waterfall just like that all the way up to the top. And as we, as we go, you will see um, where you need to stop at because you know we're going to do um, a title over top of these. And I think for this one, we're probably going to call it our, veg our vegetable sides because, you know, there's more than one kind of side. Um, this is going to be vegetable sides. I think that will be um, apropos for this one. Where I'm, I'm going to do also do probably in the sides. I'm going to do one that spreads. So anything that has to do with making a bread, a cornbread, spoon breads, um, may, even maybe sweet breads, 
we will put a section for breads in here as well because I don't know about y'all but I love myself some bread I know it's not a carb friendly um, uh, side or dish but what is a meal without some bread whether it be um, whether it be your um, your cornbread, your rolls, your biscuits, your spoon bread, your your banana breads. Oh, I know those are almost like a dessert, but it's still a bread. So you know we're gonna we're gonna have a place for those. And I also want to make sure that I have sides in here like potato salad, mac and cheese, yam bakes, um, cabbage, um, corn pudding, um, all of those good recipes that are our home. Oops, that one did not want to go in there straight. So we're going to work this one just a little bit. Okay, I think I got it. You want to come back up and make sure when you put these in that they're not sticking to themselves because sometimes they will try to stick and we don't want that we just want them to go in here and be nice and neat so and as you can see this is um coming together this is a very quick um way to fill your page and have plenty of room for all of your favorite recipes. Okay, I had a little hiccup there, but that was a phone call, so um, I will just, I'm picking right back up. Y'all didn't miss a beat because all I was doing was just gluing this one in, and we got that one in, so we're moving on to the next one. So here we go. And this one is going to go down right here. And one thing that's making this a little bit more difficult is this page is wanting to um, curl because it's not flat. So I'm holding my hand up under it and working that down just like that. And let's see, we're going to put, we can probably get several more up here. So this is good. So we've already got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I think we can get easily get twelve more recipes on this page. And that's a good thing because we um we can just put these down just like this and yep and that's looking super good now, if you wanted to, and I didn't because we had the little bit of green around the edge of these, you could very easily go in and distress them. So if you had a plain um, card that didn't have any coloring on it, you could go in and, and distress the edges of it with your ink, um, your ink blending tool. But I didn't think this needed it. This, These looked fine without it, so I didn't. And I am going to have to cut just a couple more, maybe three or four more of these. So I'm going to close that over on it and I'm going to close the book and for the sake of, um, of time I am going to go ahead and cut, and I'm going to show y'all how I did this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring in one of these sheets that I cut these um, or printed these on, 
and I'm going to line it up and I'm using that little wood grain. It looked like when the, where these were laid, it was like a wood grain. So I'm just cutting to that wood grain and then I'm coming down here and I'm going to cut right at the bottom of that card. So now we've got that one cut out and then I'm going to do the same thing with these. I'm going to line these up right there at the top edge of that. Oops, I didn't get that one very straight, did I? You don't, you don't want to do that. You want to try to get them nice and straight. So we are going to go ahead and get this one lined up. And I'm going to try to cut this right on that line. And we did pretty good. And again, I'm going to come up and try to get just that brown that wood grain and if you choose the same recipe card you will see what I'm talking about that wood background is there and I'm using that as my guideline for um, my score line so and that just gives us a nice little area that we can fold back uh, or score on that one's done and let's just cut trim these out and this is a little bit of work as far as trimming but I promise you that this is much easier than cutting and stamping like I did with the other um, recipe card so this would definitely be my my way of, of doing it you know if you do have a pretty little stamp that you want to stamp your recipe cards out that by all means do that that's what I did out of necessity the other day when my printer wouldn't print and I was very frustrated. I um, hope I didn't sound as frustrated as I was uh, on my video because I was so stressed out. <laughs> and then I spent all that time on the computer, I mean on the phone, trying to get my computer straightened up. So now I'm just going to bring my scoreboard out and I'm going to show y'all how I did this. Yeah, I just laid them in my scoreboard and I basically just want to score um, down that right here, right, right there. So that's what I do, and I just work that line in really well. And then when you go back to fold that down, you have just a tiny bit of that blue peeking out. And that's what we want. And that's why I came back, because that is a small area. And I just work it down like that. And we're going to do the next one. And I do it up because I need to see where I need that score line to be. Now this one's going to be down just a little bit more, but that's okay. It doesn't matter because we are building these recipe cards and they're like they're going to be laying over top of each other. So this is fine. We just need to get that score line in so we have that little bit uh, of a edging to do our uh, glue on. Okay, let's put those three in and see if we need any more. So opening our book back up and put these back up here. And now we're going to put another one right there. again, like I said in the earlier um, uh, videos, if you want to write your, your recipes out before you glue them in, that would be a wonderful thing to do if you're making this cookbook for yourself or for your, your children or maybe even a good friend that might want your recipes. Um, this would be a great uh, thing to do is to sit down and if you're handwriting especially, uh, which even if you're not handwriting, it, it would be great to do this ahead of time. I'm not. I'm going to come back and put my recipes in. This is going to be my book. Um, I've been wanting to make me a handcrafted uh, family favorite um, recipe book for some time. And so I'm going to make this one for myself. And, uh, I've, you know, you kind of learn with that first one. So there's some probably some little things like writing the recipes out first and then gluing them in that I will probably do on my next one so 
uh, especially if I'm giving it as a gift. You could also um, use some of these writable recipe cards if you have a PDF writer. Um, before you print these out, you could actually go in and type in your recipe. But I think if you're giving this to your daughter or your daughter-in-law or friend, it would be nice for them to have your handwriting. So I know most of us don't like our handwriting, but I see people that have beautiful handwriting. And I'm always envious of those people. Okay, we got those three in, and I think we can still do three more. So this page is really going to be full of um, side recipes. So let's go ahead and cut the next ones, and then we'll get those glued in. And I think that would be plenty. We'll do a cover at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and cut, um, cut this one out. So I'm just going to cut this off right here first. And then I'm going to cut these in half. Right about there. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim these back. Like that. And then trim this off right here. And then trim this off right here. Maybe just a hair more because I didn't get all that brown off. That's the good thing about printing them out. You can trim them how you want them. And that's always a good thing because you can have your cards with as much or little of the color on the edges as you like. You can cut all the color away or just some of it. So this is always a good um, a good idea. Now see, I've left a little bit more there, but that's okay. That will give us a little bit more of an edge when we get ready to glue. And that's okay. You know, like I said, you want to do you. So I have to um, make a pound cake in a little bit. So once I finish this, I'm going to be heading into my kitchen and getting my pound cake. I figured that was one dessert that I can travel with. I'll just wrap that up with some saran wrap and then wrap it in some Reynolds wrap and it should travel really well. So let's go ahead and score these real quick and then they will be ready to glue into our album and we'll have that page done and that'll be, um, I'll show you then how I do the um, cover on it or the, the little flap that's going to come over top of this that will say vegetables and that will everything in there be a veggie side alrighty let's go ahead and fold these over my my oldest daughter who is the one that I'm going to visit um, for Thanksgiving. Her absolute favorite holiday has always been Thanksgiving. Now, Angel is a, a, a little girl. She's um, always been petite and small, but on Thanksgiving, she puts on her stretchy sweats or her, or her, her PJs, as she calls them, and she pigs out all day. Now, she's very weight conscious, so it's not like, I think she has been dieting for months, anticipating Thanksgiving. <laughs> so I always think it's so funny. And I used to tease her when she was younger, when she was a teenager. And I told her, I said, well, you got your little Ethiopian belly going because she always looks like one of those poor little starving children that has the pot bellies on, on Thanksgiving because she eats so much. But she loves Thanksgiving with a passion. So I always enjoy seeing her eat like that. Um, and she just absolutely adores it. So I told her, you know, we're going to, I'm going to make that pound cake and we can put some fruit on it and call it healthy. And she said that sounded like a plan. Okay, so I hope to take some pictures and if I do, I'll be sharing those on our Facebook page while I'm away. And uh, never been to Port St. Lucie. Um, 
and also we're going to go uh, Friday I think we're going to go and do some shopping uh, she said it's a real quaint little town that she works in called Stewart so I'm looking forward to going there to some of the little shops and um, hopefully I can find a craft shop <laughs> are y'all like me anytime you visit a new place you're looking for the craft shops I know I am because I always like to see what uh, maybe some other craft shops have. And, you know, even though I have an online store, I'm always looking for something a little different than what we normally see. And like I told y'all, y'all be on the lookout because hopefully when I get back, or shortly after I get back, I'm hoping that we will have some... Um, new supplies that will go up in our store so if that be if that happens I will do a video on that okay so this page is done we have one two three uh, four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and we could put another one underneath there uh, 15 recipe cards on this page so th I think that is fantastic and remember when you're doing this book, if you do not have enough of room here to write your all of your directions, flip it over and write on that back side. You have this whole back side of this card that you can put the rest of your directions on. So now we want to do a band that's going to come over top of this. And I thought, let's see if we can find a strip that we really like. Um, we'll here a little bit further. see what we have. What do we have left that would be cute, cute, cute to go over top of that page? Now I thought maybe a strip out of this teal would be cute because we're using that teal. So that's a thought. And let's see. How about that? What can maybe that? I think I like that color, and I like that color too. But I think I'm going to do this one. Let's look back over here and see what we did. Um, okay, we did brown there. We did the polka dot there. So yeah, we're definitely going to use this side. So I'm going to cut a strip about... Hmm, let's get our trusty little ruler out and see. I want it to be about three inches. Yeah, let's do about three inch piece off of this. I love this teal. It's so rich. And this was just a piece of cardstock that I had in another stash. Okay, we're back. And what I did is I just printed out the word vegetable or vegetables. And I am going to just cut this. And I think instead of going through the trouble of um, doing a die cut on this, let me grab a punch. I've got several punches. Now what I need to do, this is a, I think this is a paper studio um, punch. I need to see if my word will fit. It looks like it will, but I need to cut this off just a little bit more. So let's go to about there. Because what you have to look at when you're doing, you're dealing with a punch is your distance of where you want your word to live. And I want it right about in the middle, so that looks good right there. So I'm just going to punch that out like that. And again, I'm going to use my inker, and I'm just going to ink around the edges to give it that same distressed look as everything else. Okay, now let's bring our book back over. 
and this will be our finishing touch on this one and I think I'm going to put that right in the middle just like that so let's get a little glue and I'm making sure I get it all the way to the edges because I really want this to be glued down good and I'm going to put it right here in the middle making sure I get my words straight because we don't want crooked words not unless we intend them to be crooked there we go now that page right there is done now if I wanted to use one of these cards here I could very easily just cut this off across the top and I'm just going to trim this out with my scissors And then we could glue this one down right here, and this could be another recipe card for that section. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to just glue this one flat to this page. And again, you know, you can decorate this. You could put another waterfall here if you like, um, ever how you'd want to do it. But I think this is going to look really cute living right here on this page just like that. So now that page is completely done and it's green on one side and teal on the other. So let's do a three inch piece and we know we need it to be um, eight and a half so we're going to do it nine inches. So that'll give us a half an inch at the top Let's do nine and a half. I'd rather have a little extra. Nine and a half. And I'm going to score that at a half an inch. Maybe three quarters of an inch. I'll do it at three quarters. And we're just going to fold that back just like that. And let's do it on a trial run. Let's bring our book over. And let's see how that fits. We're going to have to go a little bit more. That's okay. So let's do it a full inch. Now it's going to double up behind it so it doesn't matter. Okay, so we're just going to trim off about a quarter inch off of this flap. About there. Oops. See if it'll sit in here now. This is like always um, when you're doing a, re a recipe book or an album, you need to just do trial runs on different things to see if you can make it work. We still need a little bit more taken off, so I should have took off about a half an inch, but we're going to go with another quarter, which will give us a half. Let's look at this and see how we want to run this strip down the middle. And I am just going to eyeball this and cut it. So I'm going to actually, I'm laying this down right here and I'm just going to take a pencil and make myself a little bit of a mark, just like that. And since this is a nice even cut, I'm just going to grab a pair of scissors and I'm just going to cut that straight across like that. I guess I got it fairly straight. I can never cut straight. Do y'all have that problem? 
I see some people cut with their scissors and they can just, that's why I always use my trimmer because I don't always cut straight with scissors. And that's hard for me to admit considering I've always been someone that sewed. Okay, we're gonna bring that down. So let me move our book out of the way. Let's move the scoreboard. And we are gonna glue this down just like this. So let's put our put us some art glitter glue on the back of the strip. I think these strips just add so much to the uh, the look and the feel of our um, our page that we're actually gluing down. So let's bring that up. Bring that over, and then just press that down. Now the other thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to stamp veggies on something that's going to fit right across here. So I wonder if that would look good. That's going to be hard to stamp on that paper. So let's decide how we're going to do this. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to... I think I still need to trim just a little bit more off of this. So I'm, again, I'm gonna look brave and use my scissors because I need this to go in here flush and that's much better. Okay, so let's just go ahead and put some glue on this tab. Like so. And then we're gonna put that in just like that and see how I'm doing I'm just laying that down right there at the top and then fold it down and this gives you a nice place right here you might want to take your bone folder and just press that in really good and now we have this page is completed with our waterfall now we still do need to print something to go here that will say um, vegetables so I'm going to go to my printer and print that out and we'll be right back. But I think that's our, our, our this page. This is all we're going to do with this page for now. When we come back we will do another waterfall here and we will title this um, maybe salads or um, maybe carbs. We could do all of our carb vegetables here and that would take in any potato recipes, uh, mac and cheese, um, grains like couscous or um, quinoa. These would be types of grains. Uh, so we'll, we'll come back and do that there and then I'm reserving this last page here. Uh, no, this page here. Here and here is going to be breads. So uh, come back and we will definitely get our breads and our other sides um, right there. But for right now, this is our vegetable sides. So until we craft again, everybody, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, I am hoping to get one more video up for you before I leave. And uh, until we craft again, God bless you all. If you have not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. We are growing toward our, we are probably right about 70, probably 70, maybe even 68 people away from our giveaway and I would love to come back from Thanksgiving and be able to ship that package out to our one lucky winner. Now we will have the drawing here live so when I when I um, reach that 500 I will do an announcement and say that we have reached our 500 and we are getting ready to do our rap, rap, rafter copter raffle copter I think it's called and we will do that live not live but I will record it um, I can't do lives yet because I need a thousand subscribers before I can go live so y'all help me get there I'm so excited I love everybody so much I wish you the happiest of Thanksgivings and until we craft again 
God bless you. I love you so much. And remember, let everything that you do or say bring glory to our Father in heaven. And we, we just, um, we love him. We want to honor him and praise him. He's so worthy. And until we craft again, bye-bye.